Welcome, welcome friends, it's Freezy here, and today we're starting a new playthrough of Sable. Uh, this game, I I will admit, it's another one of those where I was like, I'm about to buy this even though I have the biggest backlog of games to play right now. And I honestly just saw this game and I saw the art style of it, and I was like, we gotta play it. Uh, again, I'll be a perfectly frank, perfectly honest, I watched the trailer and I might have might have shed a little tear or two um so i'm excited to kind of go through and see the rest of this game and see like the art direction of it it's so unique and it's just it looks very very cozy um for for anyone that doesn't know and is interested in what this game is actually going to be about um the description from you know straight from google itself says sable is an open world exploration game in which the player as the young girl sable searches for the fitting rite of passage mask which such can then return her to her nomadic clan. The game has no combat or set storyline. It emphasizes simple puzzle solving and discovery, traversing sand dunes and ruins. And so already that's really interesting to me that this game will just kind of be you going from, you know, world to world or puzzle to puzzle without fighting. It's like literally it's a pacifist run but it's within the game so that's going to be pretty interesting to kind of see and i feel like a lot of this game is going to be more about um the the look of the area and just taking in the art direction of it um also i kind of wanted to note about this game that the entire soundtrack of this was written by japanese breakfast the it's it's all just all just japanese breakfast that made this and the the song is also in the trailer as well and it's it's very it's very soft very um i feel like it creates a or introduces the game in a very in a very good way and kind of gets you a good feel for how playing this game would make you feel um and i was actually just reading an article about how uh, japanese breakfast says that this is the best song that she feels she's ever written um so i'm very interested and very excited to kind of get into it and experience all of that together as as just one adventure and also to share that with everyone so we'll just get right into it and kind of see what this is going to be like the, whenever i was watching it it kind of looked like it, it gave me a breath of the wild feel or as like a zelda feel of as far as exploration goes um but we'll we'll kind of go see and what see what that actually if that actually holds up. And I do also want to note that that intro music was just extremely, extremely good vibes. Very soft. Um, and we'll see. This already looks like it's out of a comic book. Have you ever seen a cuter roach before? Because I surely have not. Okay, so here's us as Sable. Oh. is making me think of something you would play as you know white noise or something when you would fall asleep to all right quest started this ceremony okay let's see if we can open up our quest i should head back to camp okay it looks like we actually have some stamina for climbing things I feel like I have this problem in the beginning of games where I have the mindset of, you know, later gameplay for other things. And I just want to check all the nooks and crannies and make sure that I get everything. But, you know, it's it's usually a very low, very low chance that they actually would put secrets and things to miss in the beginning. But I just can't get over that fact that there's there's a corner over there that I want to look at. But we'll keep walking through. Oh, there's a ladder. 
I don't let's I don't think this will open. Okay, not quite. I'd also probably mention this in the beginning of every game, but the pitter patters. The flip flopping. A plus. Okay, so let's go up here. And it doesn't look like you use up any stamina whenever you climb a ladder. Okay, so we can crouch. That's so pretty. Okay, let's hope that there's no fall damage. Okay, nice. There is a door here, so it does seem like this is probably something we'll come back to later. Okay, we got a sprint. Also with the shift. I wonder how much of this will be staying in this area, and how much... I guess variety we'll see in the map because it sounds like a lot of it's going to be sa sand dunes. So we'll see if they kind of add a, a little bit more of a different look to different map areas. Oh. Okay, there's other people besides us. Oh, he I love his design. That's cool. I can feel Jadi smiling behind her mask, just as I know she can feel the teeth bearing a little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous, and she's softly, sweetly amused. In her eyes, I probably have very little to worry about. You know you have nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? I'm not worried. I tell her I'm not worried at all, and it's possibly the least convincing I've ever been. You can say that, my love. But I do know who, how you are. You're going to be nervous until you've started, and you will, and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put you on the seat. You were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping onto me. I feel the memory in my fingers. But then you promised it was going to be all right. I told you how much. But then I promised you it was going to be all right. I told you how much I had loved riding my bike as a young woman, and how wonderful the wind felt through the fabric. Suddenly there you were. You sat down. You leaned forward and put those little grasping claws on the handles and you were off. And I remember thinking, just as watching you tear, you tear over the sand. Look at her. She can do whatever she wants. Jaddy reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. And you can, Sable. I take a breath. I think I'm ready. Thank you, Jotty, for the encouragement. And I tell her with a nod that I think I'm ready. I know you are, so let's get you started. You'll need to talk to Hillel and Driss. Driss should already have the arrangements for your bike, and Hillel will share something. Well, let's say useful, as it is fun, hmm? I think I might suspect what Jotty's saying, but I stay quiet. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. What if I choose the wrong path? Oh, <laughs> I told Jaddy I'd be back soon. Sable, don't go planning your return before you've even left. Take all the time you need. It's a big decision you're making out there. I tell her that's why I'm so eager to make it. To choose well and quickly, so that I don't go too far down the wrong path. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. Now go speak with Hillel. I'll be there to see you off. And speak with Driss as well. I've told them to arrange your spike with Cizo, but you know how he is. I have something to give you. A compass to help you on your journey. It's the same I use in my gl gliding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there, perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Thank you. Go on, go on. It's nearly time. I need to complete task for Halal and Driss. Look at this campsite though. It's, I love the look of this a lot. Okay, so we need to be ready to go talk to the rest of these people. I kind of want to go start this conversation with her again though. Oh.
Oh, okay, so this compass will show me what direction to go. Jaddy greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. That's big glider to you. I tell Jaddy I'm actually big glider. She laughs. You're right, you are. Sable noted adult and big glider. Keep it in mind. Okay, let's go talk to some of these other people, though. Oh, let's look at their masks. I wonder if there'll be an option to find new ones and put those on. Or maybe the masks are just part of the identity. Okay. Let's see what this person has to say. As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Something on your mind? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Ilaria over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Ilaria. Does she need help? Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine. I gather I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. I want to be a mom. Okay, let's go up this. Kind of just explore a little bit. What if this was a staircase that just never ends? Oh, okay. Nice little reward up here. Hi, I would like to see your mask. His kind of looks like a gas mask. Or actually, I've been watching Squid Games and I feel like that circle just makes me think that he's one of the workers. Caesar looks busy. I should leave her to it. Oh, she. It seems like okay. actually every character has been a female so far. I wonder if there's any any male characters in this game. I would like to jump down. Is this a bad idea? Does this gameplay end here? Not yet. Not yet. Is that a cow? Oh, you just have a bucket on your head. Umari is a man of few words, and if- and if he's nothing if not consistent. Oh. Umar, there's- there's no hay there, buddy. <laughs> I think I turned him around. Uh, oh, I can throw things? Yeet. Can I pet? No, unfortunately not. Oh, they're like also wearing masks though, that's really cute. Okay, let's see who lives in this boat, and then after that, we'll go take care of our quest. Unless you are the one to talk to. <gasps> I sit. Okay. Though I've told myself not to be too eager, it's all I can do not to tr race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but now I strongly suspect that he's working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful, or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore, or will I get used to it? Driss turns with a bit of a start. Sable. Er, hello. I was told you have something special for me. I tell Triss I have- they hate- I was told he has something special for me. Something special? I nod very meaningfully, but he doesn't seem to get the hint. I make a leading gesture, slowly, trying to be perfectly cool and confidential. But I can't do it. I'm too keen. And the words spill out. I asked Driss if he might, sort of, possibly, maybe have a bike for me. Your bike? He yells like it, like it's an idea he just had. Your bike? Yes, of course, right. Your bike. That I was meant to- that I prepared for you. Because today is your- Did you forget? In abject horror, I gently ask if he had forgotten. Wh what? I, I would never. It's obviously I have your bike. By which I mean, I arranged it for you in a- well, it's sort of a tutorial for you. Not exactly, but that's because it's part of your gliding. You see, Sable, before one can own their own bike, they must prove that they can ride a bike by taking a test ride, 
on a different bike. I think about it, and I find I've never heard that part of the gliding, but Driss does seem earnest, sort of. So, instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try this bike, as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter at his side. It's quite old and a little shabby, a tester if I've ever seen one. What's the bike's name? Driss seems scandalized. That's a bit personal, don't you think? Just sand cutter will do for now. Youngsters these days, always asking questions. Now, ride the bike through the ring and back. And here's some advice for you, my young glider. Don't fall off. Don't lose your bike. When you're riding it, your hover bike will appear as a blue icon on the compass. Okay, come back after the sand cutter through the ring. What is this, though? It almost has this like weird glow to it, and I want to touch it. Alright. Y'all be going for a joyride. W to accelerate, strafe, steer, get off. Oh my god, it's just sputtering. This is junk. It's junk. This is kind of fun. Alright, go through the ring. Now we can go speak to Driss. <gasps> we got tricks. We got some air behind that one. Surely you have a name for that Driss. I returned to Driss, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide ride? Any strange rattles? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? What do you mean fires? Surely you'd notice if you were on fire, even a little bit. Was that a possibility? Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Driss, is this bike dangerous? Well, he doesn't finish. Have you already been to Hillel? Oh, right. I nearly forgotten about Hillel. I think, I th and I thank Driss, Driss for the reminder, before at least nudging him a little about the bike. I ask him if I'm still getting one. Well, you're getting the use of the sand cutter. That's something, eh? You can borrow it and run your little errands. My little errands. And Halal's got something to show you, too. Help help you out with more than that, or mobility after your... With my confidence in his exercise only a little tarnished, I thank Driss very much for his help on his bike, and I depart for Halal. Quest completed. Slicing sands. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Halal. She looked like she was in a trailer. Or he. Oh, is it this way? Or do I need to select the quest? Let's double check. Okay, follow this quest. That looks like it's the new one though. Oh, what's this? I'm honestly just getting very distracted by the shining, flashing things. Okay, let's... I guess we'll follow this then. Oh, that's what this is leading me to? sprint. Okay, we're gonna go look for Halal. Oh, hello. Hmm. How is it that Saima manages to contain so much chaos and fear in so, in so small a form? Even now there is something troublesome being dreamed up behind that mask. I know it. They do have a little bit of a scary one. They're kind of staring in here, which makes me curious. All right, let's uh, let's get to our quests first. Oh, 
all of a sudden this place seems huge. I just don't know what, what point I went so far. Okay, can I go back and... Follow quest. Okay, so it is still there. So that one should be Driss, and Halal should be the one that's pointing to the right. Are they up, maybe? anyone here. Am I lost? Let's climb. Well, I can only climb so high. this right here. Okay, this must be... You, I like their mouse too. Actually, oh. Is that a cell phone? It l literally looks like a Nokia. As I approach Halal, they give an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verg and vigor, and on a day like this, I'm ready to match it, with a touch of nerves of in for balance. Sable, take this. Halal sends me a small round stone, and is, as it nestles into my palm, I feel the warmth not borrowed from Halal's hand, but uh, em emanating from within. I rub my thumb over it and find a soft electric like static on a cloth. I didn't bring anything for you. Halal gives a tinkling laugh. Oh, Sable, you can make up for it when you turn someday. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal I, what, uh, that I feel... Electricity? Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gliding stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you for, to channel. Right now it's empty, or dormant, and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. Take it to the temple, ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. Halal claps their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. Oh, okay, so Halal is the one with the, the cyborg leg, right? And it seems that they use they them pronouns and they just kind of threw that in there <clears throat> which I love all right so where are these this altar I'll go this way oh let's take the bike okay hop on It really is just like sputtering. It's absolute junk. What is this silhouette? Something in the air. I also, it's definitely like veering to the right. I can't make it go any faster. Oh no. I was looking for a cave, but where is this altar? Hmm. 
It doesn't look like stars, but they're definitely... The sky is just look very interesting. Alright, let's go up this. The way her flip flops are sitting against the wall. I don't know why that just looks, first of all, uncomfortable. Who's doing climbing and flip flops? Sable, you amaze me. Let's get up on this. <laughs> this structure looks interesting. Get a little fresh. Worm literally doing the worm. Let's talk to it. A chum egg. Oh! Chum egg. Offered up by chums when planting themselves into the ground. Perfectly smooth and hard as a rock. These eggs seem to float with how light they are. There must be a good place to deliver these. go interesting okay so I think <gasps> what <laughs> well that was quite rude hmm, okay so I guess since we're gonna get a gliding, or since we have a gliding stone, we'll have to float our way back out of here whenever we're ready. The stone thrums like a beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Maybe. Th it feels right. I am ready for R Rohana to know me. I am ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in the sacred place. I know I am in her sight. to this place. In this moment, I kind of wish I was showing cam, the face cam, because my head is tilted a whole 90 degrees right now. <laughs> Whispering stones. Show Halal the activated gliding stone. Gliding. Hold. Press and hold space to guide midair. Whoa. Oh, that's so interesting. All 
All right, so let's jump back across. There's also no stamina when you do that. Which I would think that it would use a little. So I wonder how far I can travel with that. Guess we're about to find out. Is that a treasure chest? Jewels? Not really sure what my money is called. But we got some. It's always interesting to me whenever you start a video game and you are completely broke every single time. Like, surely I was living a life before this. I should have some, some money to my name, you know? Usually flying in games kind of freak me out because it's usually very difficult to glide and control, but that actually feels pretty nice. All right, let's go find our bike, our sand cutter buddy. Where did I leave this? There you are. Alright, let's go back home. I will say, though, in every game, driving is the worst. I just simply rather not. Like whenever I play Fortnite, I will always wait until someone else gets in the car before I get in it, because I don't... I can't be held responsible for this. Look at this. Oh. I don't know if it's also because of the time of day that they've made everything a little brighter. But it looks so good. I just want to hit all the rocks now and do all the tricks. <laughs> I'm not really sure it's like whistling when I press space. That makes me think that there would be like a scene or a moment where I would be fighting against something else that's driving or something would be shooting me, but there's no combat. I have no health bar, so I'm not really sure what that would, what that's about to be used for. Okay, so we're back at camp. Let's go back and shove a guiding stone, gliding stone. When I return to Halal, it's clear they know what I've been experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Safe, like a warm hug. I tell Halal that I feel almost embraced by the perpetual warm and safe in my own little bubble. They swoon. Oh, that's such a nice way of describing it. Halal's mood doesn't darken, but the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling, just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's th the best that it fades with age, hmm. Or else I might have never come- I might have come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there having myself into chasms. I wish we could all do it. I tell Halal I wish it was something we could keep. Perpetually. So do I, Sable. So do I. I know some people manage to keep it up, but I don't know what I've got- I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Hillel laughs, even though there's a bit of regret in it. And I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean much if it were all gains and no loss, hmm? I think about that, but aside that there is already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I'm saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. If you're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. 
My advice? Try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about virtual independence and all that out there, but the world is an easier place if you put joy first. I thank Hall for their advice and their help and tell them I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and re reinsurance all in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Halal gestures towards the tower. It seems Cizo wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Cizo has a task for me. Okay. We've already went up there, so we'll just go run up real quick. What is this pod? Post box. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Unread messages. Zero. Have a good day. I will. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Ooh, can I open these for some... Alright, there's nothing in there for me. Unfortunately. Oh no. I'm wondering if I should go ahead and go out there and see if I can check on the girl in the, in the desert. Oops. I have such a problem in in games like this where I can't follow the path. Like since I'm able to climb anything, I will just I in my head, I feel like climbing is the fastest way. And that's what always what I'll do. And I feel like it it actually causes a lot more trouble than it's worth. But I can't get that out of my mindset. Which is interesting because games really didn't allow that before. Like you always had to stick to the path and you couldn't climb anything. And I feel like now that they gave me that freedom, I just can't stop. Alright, Cizo. Oh my gosh, I almost fell. Cizo is an outclanner to the to the Ibexy, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall. And I think her more of a kind of distant relation than any out, sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts and by their training and by their code, they must go where they are needed. But Cizo has been among us for so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there is a perception among other clans that the Ibexi are quite insular and that our designation of Ibexi versus outclanners suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more in a result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will value with us, who will travel with us, and who we must leave behind, but we are all welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Hmm. I'll say, excited for my bike. Cizo has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite the serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, Jaddy told me how excited you were. Cecil sniffs. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bike together. But I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. Don't begrudge Driss. Don't... I don't begrudge Driss in his forgetfulness. I was tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hover bike parts for yourself. I'm going to make my own hover bike? I ask Cizo if I'm expected to make my own hover bike. No, but you make your hover bike. You are going to build your own hover bike. What's the difference? To make suggests you are creating something, but your bike already exists. They simply haven't taken form yet. Here, take this. Cizo hands me something. It's a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding old parts. I ask Cizo where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships, and fragments spread apart. A good start would be to ship down there near the camp. You'll find another on the, along the Great Rock near the other side of the canyon. And another in the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that, that down if you need. You'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Uh, I'll be back before you know it. I tell Cecil I'll see her soon, and then head off and search for the components. Together, we'll create something new out of the old. Okay, so our navigator. Using your navigator, use N to use a navigator to mark interesting landmarks to appear on the compass. Okay. 
Okay, so she said in the dam. Hmm. Can't really tell where this is about to drop down. Oh, there you go. Okay, so it's higher, so that's a, more of a distance. She said the canyon. So maybe just over here somewhere? Oh wait, no, this right here. Right there. And then this old looking ship. Where'd it go? Oh. No, that's where I came from before. I'll play something and then I'll ask her about it again. Maybe it was this over here? Hmm. Cecil's waiting for the parts. I still need to find atomic calibrator, atomic power supply, and the control panel. Uh, so I got a solid one out of three. You know, that's a... Uh, those are some good stats, right? Okay, so it was more over here. I wonder, I don't know how to remove the ones that I've already placed. She said something like over here, maybe? How can I take you out? Doesn't sound like I can. Oh, I just <laughs> put two on there. Oh no. Okay, so this is what we want in this room over here. Confusion. <laughs> All right. again. Can I just fly forever? Should I just been flying over to this thing? Oh no. Okay, now let's get the bike. Whoa, did I kick this rock? I'm about to battle something, but I know I'm not. It just seems kind of scary. There's nothing of use to be found on the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. Push the button. Always push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording. It's barely audible. Stop messing about those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Ramen. Concentrate. I know you have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Alright, let's see what that old machine has told us to hold us hold up. If it's not there, there'll be hell to pay. I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks. Buttons being pressed, perhaps? Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that level lever hard. Yes, Robin. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before snapping sound. Oh, on Rohana's mask, that's not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble gra that gradually increases in pitch. And then the sounds of someone cheering. It worked! We're flying! More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay, let's focus. That This thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Let me check the machinist's notes. A long pause. The rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen? The lever, Toma! You, the one you just ripped out! We're going too fast, we're going to crash. We need to try to... The recording cuts off there. Okay... There's a bed... Hmm. There's nothing to grab in here yet. Oh! This 
music is quite a bop. Are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Simon has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be able to withstand it. In practice. You won't find it in there. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get me. Uh, <laughs> you're a horrible child. I'll just say, may I please have it? I decide to be gentle and ask her, may I please have it? May I please have it? She makes me terribly, all high and screechy, despite my best efforts, I see. Oh, well, too bad. Maybe you'll have to find it on your own, but I don't think so. Simon laughs in my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a, ch a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put up, out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles. It's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want? I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator, or to acquiesce. But then I simply stifle a laugh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. A beetle detour. I kind of want to go to the other ones and grab the quest. I'm assuming that there's going to be a quest for each one and then go back to camp. I don't know how much of a... if that'll be a good idea. Now let's go... we'll go grab these beetles. This beetle situation first. Oh no. <laughs> Sable, well, you brave soul. Okay, let's talk to... Perhaps you will have some, some wise words for me. I could ask about catching beetles for that awful little Saima. Do you know where I can buy some beetles? There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up and catch one though. There's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetle will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. Jaddy Weem greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. Oh. I kind of just went into another conversation. Oh no. Okay, there we go. So she should have just east of here. on the map? I know this conversation just happened, but I'm trying to remember if she showed me. But I don't think she did. Hmm. Let's go drive around. Maybe I'll have to climb. Alright, let's hop out of this. Let's see what we can find up here. What am I doing? <laughs> drop it, drop it, little girl. Anyways. Oh, I can't make this. Okay. Let me check the other side of this. Just real quick. situation? Oh, nope. What am I missing here? It's either up or...
She did say east of camp, though. Oh, I was going the wrong way. Oh, okay, here you go. I can also put markers here and remove them this way. Okay, nice. So east was actually this way. I'm not really sure what this this is showing me then. Hmm. All right. So since we're over here on the wrong side of the map, we'll just go and do start up whatever quest is needed for this second part. Oh, okay, this is how we get up there. Now I'm just curious. Should I go through it? Oh, worm. So in perspective, let's take this out. Keep accidentally placing things down. That's me. This was, is this? What are you? <laughs> what are we looking at? Okay, so that's the bike. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Explore this first. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's climb up. Okay, these are the beetles. Something about the food. Is it this over here? She said to grab something and drop food. How do I get this? Another one. Oh my god, that's so cute. Stop this. I wonder if there's a reason to get more of them later. Should I just grab all of them? Or is this like disturbing the wildlife type of situation? Like, is this frowned upon? <gasps> Don't sit with him. Kidnap him. Okay, let's get these two and then we'll go back. <laughs> Grab, throw. We got one. That's okay. 
Is there anything up here? <gasps> oh, another one. More eggs. Alright, so back to the bike. Did I just assume this was east? <laughs> Did she show me what this looked like? I'm just... How did I come to the conclusion to come here? Alright, so we got our buggies. Oh no, where did I park? Oh. I think since we're over here... We're gonna go up this... But how? Okay. There's a ladder. Look at that shading. Or the way they did the lines from this platform. How anticlimactic that I was like, today is the day, and now I'm pretty sure like four days has four days have passed. <laughs> I wasn't I haven't been able to leave yet. Okay, so let's pull the lever. Isn't this a dam? This isn't- I don't think you just should be opening up dams because you feel like it. Alright, we just climb. Did you go all the way over there? But I don't know if there's a reason to. Okay, here's the big room. Uh oh, control panel. Okay. So I guess that's all that we needed out of this one. Maybe that was just a small taste of a puzzle. Okay. The curiosity I can't. It seems very big over here. Maybe I'll have to come back to this. Or there'll be like a reason to go there later. Because that looks too, too big for me right now. I will check out this corner though. In case of worm. Okay, nothing in there. The ship, maybe? Just these random like sand ships. I wonder if there's a backstory here that there was water or this there like it wasn't always like desolate sand area because the idea of having a dam here and also ships lying around some extra world lore will be will be fun to find out later So I think it said that she will be hanging around camp. So we'll go find her there. Um, and I still didn't see the girl that's playing out in the sands. I don't see her running around or anything. 
Alright, well... Maybe it'll come up as a quest later to go find her. Because it kind of just seems like she was just talking about it before. Oh, sir, you've been... Here, can I... Do you want me to turn you back this way? Mar has a man a few words, and he's nothing if not consistent. Okay, but at least he's digging it in the right spot now. Oh, okay, we almost missed this money. Alright, so we're looking for Saima. I thought it said underneath camp, but let's double check this real quick. She likes to play in the cave underneath the camp. I did see her over here when she was just staring into nothingness before. Didn't I? Didn't I, didn't I, didn't I see you staring? Okay. Oh, it was over here. I feel embarrassing, embarrassingly vindicated as I hand Simon the beetles, but rather than gloat, she hands me a calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving. You're leaving. You'll never come back. Comfort her. She blows her nose and then wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. She might visit again someday. I tell Saima that Yara will likely visit one day, just as I will if I ever choose to uh, another clan. But how will you find us? We'll have moved millions of times by then. I offer that I will find the, the Abexi, no matter what. Please don't go. I tell Simon not to worry that I will be back sooner than she knows, and I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And I ask if I'm not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready by, for her gliding by then, and then she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I suppose I can see you off. I thank her and say goodbye for now. Okay, last one. The power supply. Where did I leave this bike, though? Okay, I do see that glowing red in the distance, and I didn't really see that before when I was placing down some navigation. Honestly, opening up the map, it does look like it's going to be pretty pretty big and there's going to be lots of areas to explore. And I wasn't really expecting that from this game. It kind of seemed like it'd be a little bit more s smaller, well, maybe more like form, smaller form factor. Um, but I guess considering it's an open world game, kind of make it a little bit of expansive. Expansive. Okay. So we'll climb up this, see where we can go. Pretty sure it should be around here somewhere though. Maybe we'll just try climbing to the top. I mean, be proud of me because I'm definitely following some sort of pathway a little bit. Oh gosh. Will I make this? I think I need to go all the way to the top over here. That's the goal. I love this time of day right now. It just makes everything so bright, so saturated. Hmm. Okay, we'll just climb this wall. curious of what's on this platform, if anything. Huh. More coins? Mm. The 
this also looks like super advanced. Okay, do I want to follow this? Glowing redness down? I can climb back up if not. Let's uh, wander first. What's this? Oh, power supply. do kind of want to... I'm Everything that's glowing in this game has really piqued my interest. And I just don't know why. Oh, okay. This treasure chest looks kind of serious. Cuts. A hundred cuts made from metal harvested from crashed ships. Rope can be slid through for easy, convenient transportation. Hmm. All right, you gotta follow the glowing things. We now know. Okay, the bike. Oh, right there. I swear I've only been using that when I'm standing directly next to it. Okay, we're about to get our own our our own bike. Uh this is tempting though. What's this? Oh maybe just more money? Even if I don't get to change my masks or, you know, how I look, I'm kind of hoping I can change the look of the bike. Just always want to customize everything. Okay, so we're talking to... Is he the one that gave me the quest? Oh, Cizo. Return to Cizo was a p with the parts. It's as she waves me over that I feel a pang sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble your a bike of your own? I'm ready. Then let us head to the workshop. Oh. Cizo relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she is particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Cizo is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you might understand, Sable, is that the components you acquire, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we've been doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machine machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Assemble the machine. On here? Wings? 
Hopefully this doesn't have to go in a certain order. Uh, bike booster. Oops. You missed. And just the front. Alright, so we have everything there. Let's do it. Caesar relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly anxious. Oh. Okay, so we can skip all that. Do we just press button? You know, that kind of looks like I wouldn't fit in that if I'm being perfectly honest. Listen. Ciso tilts her head for a moment, leaning closer to you. Simoon? Simon. Simoon. All at once, I know the hoverbike's name. Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Ciso know. Simoon. Simoon. Well done, Sable. I think it is Simoon. What does it mean? What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Ciso looks ser entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing. Even when I lean close. I tell Simon that I am eager to know her better, and Saizo looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Saizo is prone to such things and can read it in her tone that is quite meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simon. Take care of her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable, and they will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, here, take this. A badge. You'll meet plenty of, of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth and they'll give you more badges. I thank Caesar twice for good measure. I can give a bow. I am ready. Okay, speak to Shoddy. Jotty. <laughs> Not Shoddy. <laughs> okay, Caesar's doing her thing. Hey, yo, shawty, what do you got to say? Meow. That car cartographer landed his balloon while you were away. You should go speak to him. See if he can't get a map. I nod and begin to go, but Jotty gestures me back and puts something in my hand. Here's some money to get you going on your journey. Use it most wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. That's what we like. That's what we like to hear. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. I thank Jotty effusely and head out my way. This balloon up here? Maybe? This does look like it's the. This is the kid I was looking for before. Oh, look at their little mask. The balloon was more fun than the person in it. Oh, God. <laughs> His glows, though. Can I have the moss that glows? I approach the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? She really is. I nod enthusiastically. It really is an impressive vessel. However nervous I am imagining being up there all alone, I wonder if anyone's ever fallen off one. Best not to ask right now. Ah, good to meet you. And oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. I suppose if you've come all this way to see me, you're probably a map after. Hmm, a Sable? I would love a map. I tell the cartographer I would love a map. Oh, of course you would. That'll be about 50 cuts. Okay, let's buy that map. Perfect. Let's trade then. We shopping? Ah, I seem to have nothing left for you. 
I thank Jordan for that era map and its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on your gliding, Sable. I still remember mine. I asked how it was. Short. I knew I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell for you from Halco, Halco and Sodic Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip and say goodbye. Farewell, child. Okay, is there anything else I need to pick up here? One more about Jadi. We've got everything else. Okay. I'm glad I didn't go looking for this child for long, then. They seem to be in good hands. And by that I mean with a stranger's hands. I return to Jadi with the new with a new lightness. And it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Cizo gave it to me. I tell Jadi that Cizo gave me the badge. Then you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the mask caster in no time. I try to think about the mask caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll have plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. But don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. How will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out, but when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there's really only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the through the face door at the temple of Rana. There, you'll assemble your gliding mask. And go. There are things I wish to convey to Jadi here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. And though I find myself unable to speak any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made you these. They're dyed with traditional Ibexi maroon, and I hope to provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of Ibexi. You will simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I will always know you. I will always love you. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin, and I am ready. Okay, head up to the temple. I need my own bike. Can I take it? Perhaps? We'll just go straight to it. I mean, surely they're not gonna let me just leave my bike over on this side of the map. One would hope. I worked so hard for that. I wonder what it's going to be like when that face opens up. Like, is it just going to be like a door? Maybe I just crawl up right through the mouth? Through the nose? It's always an option. There's actually a puzzle to get out of here before. Okay, so I think we actually just need to climb up there. Oh! Ooh. get to this one. 
Maybe we're just pressing all the buttons. Oh, the Mothman is here too. I wonder if these are like their their founders. Is this giving me my mask? Maybe. is over there. There seems to be a third one too. Oops. Hmm. Can I climb over here? Oh no. Oh no. Sable. Sable. I will say that I have gone through, I would say I probably got the gliding half an hour ago. I have not once yet broken out into High School Musical. This is honestly quite an achievement. Alright, so one more. Oh, it's the top piece that's going to drop down. Okay. Oops. Okay. I can't get over the color that they put on this the gliding animation it just stands out so well but it also feels very very warm with it or makes everything feel a little warm I'm such a fan this I don't remember seeing the statue in the in the desert Let's go get the mask. This is giving me past Avatar lives feels. They're kind of spooky though. The Bexy mask. Return to camp. Why did I not put it on? the door okay I, I think she, I think she was facing it let's climb up this ladder <gasps> back through the face Interesting happened here where this room definitely was more saturated when the game started and now it's gone. 
I don't know if it, I don't think it was a time of day thing either. Oh. I am playing through Kina Bridge of Spirits uh, also as a playthrough on YouTube and it's interesting that I feel like people really like to use masks as a I don't know, a, I want to say like a storytelling aspect in games. And I find that very interesting. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Jody's voice echoes strangely through the machine, yet still it warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There's a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I am grateful. It would be far too much for me to hear the cracks in her voice and not run weepily into her arms to say forever. But I am ready, and I close my eyes and listen. But though you are by yourself, you are not without friends. You are not without family. You are not without love. These things will c carry always with you, as do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go see Utari. They're the machinist at Burnt Oak Station and among Cecil's closest friends. Utari is a good contact to have on one's gliding, and a fine one to get another machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only suggestion, though. As for us, I'll send another message once we've returned to Ur, to, so keep an eye on post boxes and try not to forget us. She takes a long breath, and I forget that thing as easy as breathing could ever exist. The world is waiting, Sable. Good luck. That's so heartbreaking that I go in just to get the mask and then when I come back out, everyone that I've known forever for my whole life has just left me here. out. Is that for my bike? Oh, good Simoon. What a good girl. Okay. Okay, you can put the mask on. And I forgot to put the clothes. So let's put on the new outfits. And then this is our first time writing, writing this. All these statues are like two people. That's so interesting. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I thought I ran into something.
Honestly, what a way to start, like, the actual, the actual gameplay in that tutorial moment. Um, but I do think that's a good place to kind of leave off for the next one. I'm very interested about what Jotty was saying, basically about how we would collect masks and choose, it kind of sounds like a profession or how we're going to live the rest of our life, basically. So I wonder if that's how much exploring there's going to be of, you know, what are the options and, and what we could possibly do in the future. Um, and also it's, this whole badge from getting all from getting from the machinist um it almost gives like a pokemon feel on like going to go see the gym leaders or something so i'm interested to see what that's going to entail and how you know how important it is to get all these badges um and also i'm assuming that that would mean that i get upgrades for for simoon so that should be that should be a good time too um but overall so far this game has just been just if nothing else very very pretty to look at and it's it just looks it just has such an interesting style to it that uh it's that's if that's really what makes me want to keep going um again i i don't know if it's going to keep being like a deserty feel and how much variety there's going to be in it but i guess we'll have to just keep going and see um thank you so much for watching if you want to keep uh following along with what sable has to offer i'm going to be uploading these videos uh on mondays uh mo monday mornings and yeah we'll just see how how that goes if y'all liked it please be sure to leave a thumbs up go ahead and subscribe if you want notifications for the next one and leave a comment if well, what basically what you think of this game um and again i do also stream on twitch i play more of zelda genshin um some other different types of games on there and so if you'd like to just hang out and you know talk a little bit about games further i'll leave the socials down below uh, thank you again so much for watching be excellent and i'll catch you at the next one thank you thank you Another one? Another one. <laughs>